Okay, welcome to part 12. As I said in the previous part, what we're going to be doing in this part is creating the page to view the private message. So at the moment what we have is a way for the user to um, delete their messages, but not to actually view them. Um, to test this, obviously we're going to need some messages. So I've forgotten who I'm logged in as, but I'm just going to send some messages to myself. So me, and the subject can just be one, and then I'll do, I don't know, I'll, just, I'll think of something clever for the next one. Um, so this can just be two, which will say three. Whoa, crazy. Okay, so there we go. If I just go back to my inbox, these are unread. Oh, sorry, okay, that's something I forgot to mention at the end of last part. Um, these two conversations, um, that's, some, yeah, okay, so let me explain by going back to the code. Uh, if we go to our add conversations function, or create conversation, um, here, where we just simply added the user ID to the um, array of user IDs to insert, we then set the convers the last read time for them equal to zero, which is not what we want to do. We want to set it equal to the current time. So actually, the best way to do that is most likely just to use this as the default value in the array. So we're going to remove this and put that there, except instead of but well, for time, we're going to have the um, Unix timestamp, i.e. now, like so. And also this user ID needs to be the session user ID. So, sorry for being a total pro as usual. Ah, okay, there we go. Nope. There we go. So now what we're doing, instead of the previous method, um, we are using this whole string as a default value and then we're for every other user we're setting their time to zero in this loop and then we're imploding all of that here so it's essentially the same except completely different but anyway yeah that's just something I meant to mention almost after I'd said it but then didn't ever okay so that's that done so let's go ahead and create the view conversation page so the first thing we're going to do is add a link here because if you remember we left this blank as a sort of placeholder what we want to do is have this link to the correct page which is fairly obvious um, so what we want to link to is index.php and page equals view conversation uh, I think and we also need to specify the conversation ID um, so that the conversation ID, the view conversation page knows which conversation data to load so we're going to specify another variable called conversation ID and that's going to be equal to some PHP which is just going to be outputting the conversation ID so actually I'm just going to copy this from above because I know this works it's a pretty simple thing to do but I um, don't want to make any more typos <laughs> so yeah anyway so what we need to do now is just make sure this links to the right place so let's go back here just reload this click on one of these you can see we get this blank page and in the URL we have conversation ID equals 3 so that's good so what we can do now is go to our code again and go to the view conversation page file which again if you remember is in the core folder and then the pages folder so in this file what we need to do is two things one of them is show all of the messages which is what we're going to do first and the other thing is we need to provide a form for the user to add their own messages um, before we do any of that, what I'm going to do is add a div at the top called actions, which is going to specify, well, it's just going to contain two two useful-ish links. The first one is going to be a link to the inbox page, so it's a link to index.php page equals oops, inbox, and this is just going to say inbox. Oops and the second one is going to be a logout link because that might be useful so index.php page equals logout and that's just going to say logout okay so that's just two little links that will probably be useful later on so next thing we need to do is essentially the same as we did for the conversations page except for the messages so we're going to create a div which is going to contain all of the messages. Its class is going to be messages. 
and inside it we're going to have a PHP loop which is going to loop over all of the messages. So we have a PHP block in here which is going to be for each messages as message show the messages. Um, obviously um, we um, don't want to um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm saying. At the top of the page we then need to get the list of conversations sorry, the list of messages that are in this conversation um, so what I'm going to do is well first thing we need to do is check to make sure that this is actually a valid conversation and we're only going to show the messages or fetch the messages if this is a valid conversation so essentially what we need to do is make sure that the user is a member of this conversation so that they can't go around reading other people's messages so anyway at the top I'm going to add a PHP block um, with the right symbol and we're going to um, do a simple check so we're going to do if is set get conversation ID so if they've specified a conversation ID and validate conversation ID using this same variable so get conversation ID and just remember that this is the same function we, we created when doing the validation for the message deleting um, so if this condition is true it means that the conversation is valid so inside of here we know that it's a valid conversation however we're not going to do this check like this because we need to know if this is a valid conversation in quite a few places and we don't want to keep doing the same query, tri query twice because that would be pretty stupid so we're going to delete this and set the result of this equal to a variable so we're going to do valid conversation equals so that's something you can do you can set a sort of if statement but without the if part a, a boolean check equal to a variable and you can later use that in other if statements so we're going to need this twice in total for this page um, but as always we don't want to perform any more queries than are absolutely necessary so yeah that's that so above this we're going to define an errors array so the same as before we always need the errors array actually I believe that might be something I forgot yes that is something I forgot um, if you recall when we were um, creating this portion of the code here on the inbox page um, I said that we needed to define the errors array outside of this if statement below um, because we were also going to check to see if the um, user was a member of the conversation um, no sorry we were also going to check to see if the user actually had conversations if they didn't we were going to show an error message um, so we actually need to do that check so just underneath here we can do a simple if empty conversations because we obviously need to get the list of conversations first also something that I probably should have pointed out at the time is that this fetch conversation summary has to be done after the conversation is deleted otherwise you'll delete a conversation and it'll still appear until you next time you reload, reload the page but anyway it's not something you need to worry about massively at the moment so anyway I'm just going to add something to this errors array which is going to be a string which is going to say um, you have no messages um, and also we didn't actually ever display these messages which is a bit of a silly thing to do again on my part so sorry for that but what we need to do is loop over the errors only if they're empty although it doesn't make much difference because looping over an, em an empty array effectively does nothing uh, but we're going to do it anyway because so, it's just sort of what we do so we're going to do if empty errors then we're going to loop over the array so for each errors um, as error then we're going to output the div error message warning box thingy who has the class who uh, which has the class of message and error that's the red one and it's going to contain the error like so so that's just something we've got to do in the last part and we can't really test this at the moment without deleting all my conversations which isn't something we could do but unless I forget we'll test this a bit later on so sorry for getting for forgetting that but well, I guess you noticed at the time anyway it was a pretty daft thing just to forget to do but anyway it doesn't really matter anyway so going back to what the actual subject of this part was supposed to be 
uh, which was the view conversation page what we were doing was defining our errors array up here equal to be an array and then we're going to perform a few checks below this and then we are going to remember to output the error messages so just below the validate or the valid conversation check we're going to do simply if valid conversation because we do need this at this point it's just that we need it a bit later on as well so if this is equal to false we're going to set something in into the errors array or put something into the errors array which is going to be the same message as before invalid conversation ID so not giving too much away but enough to let them make them try a different ID I guess or a different link anyway so that's that um, and then in this bit here we're going to have a few more error checks related to the submission of the form and then here we're going to check to see if the errors array is empty and if it isn't which is not what I did before that should be false obviously for very obvious reasons but oh dear not a good day today <laughs> anyway um, if anyone can work out my average errors per minute um, don't tell me <laughs> it'd be an interesting stat but don't tell me anyway be depressing right so here we need to do the same thing so actually what I can do for the sake of time saving is just copy this because we're using the same variable names so you can just copy and paste that there and it'll still work okay so that's that done um, and what we want to do now is only show the messages and the actions um, if this is a valid conversation because the only way that it won't be a valid conversation is if they're trying to mess with our system basically um, by trying different IDs and trying to read other people's messages and that sort of thing and inputting invalid data so what we're going to do is only show them this page effectively if the conversation is valid so we're going to do another if check here so if valid oops valid conversation we're going to do this block basically um, and the reason by the way that we're not just using the errors array to determine this uh, which we could do is that say if the user has is on a valid page and they submit the form we would put something in the errors array and then if we check if empty errors here the whole form will disappear because the errors array won't be empty but we do want to keep the form there otherwise because that would be really annoying if they have to like go back click the message type it all out again um, so yeah that's why we're doing that anyway um, now if you determine that this is a valid conversation what we need to do is actually get the data from it so um, just um, inside this valid conversation block what we're going to do is fetch the messages so this is going to be creating a new function I'm just going to sort of type it out for now like I have been so far so we're going to create a function called fetch conversation messages and we're going to give it a single parameter which is going to be the conversation ID to get the messages for so it's going to be get conversation ID and we're going to store the result of this in a variable called messages that's going to return an array okay so let's just go to our backend file now and we will code this function um, so let's see where's that that's um, sorry I'm being a bit blind it's um, here no it isn't it's here yes okay good so we're going to scroll up because fetching things come before other things so under the previous fetch function we are going to um, add a function a new function called whatever I just called it which was fetch conversation messages oops and that's that highlight from before which I'll just clear off screen there we go so fetch conversation messages and we're passing in the conversation ID um, and as usual we just need to make sure that this conversation ID is suitable for use in a query so we're going to cast it to an integer by doing this okay that's that um, and again this SQL is fairly uh, complicated 
So I think what I'm going to do is call this here, um, and then in the next part we will go over the you know finishing off this function. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. So thank you for watching, and come back for part 13, where we'll finish off this function and hopefully get time to test it all out.